board member uh, out from Franklin as well. If you want to stand up and, and introduce yourself. Racial disparities, whether we're talking unemployment, graduation rates, 
uh, suspension rates, uh, whether we're talking uh, 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 economic mobility. And every year when we think about the, the Milwaukee metro political area, we have been near at the very top of the list of being one of the most segregated communities in our country. And so our plan is really about prioritizing resolving many of the disparities that we see by addressing the needs of the individual person and their whole as a whole, but also the whole family. In the final strategic focus area uh, is investing in equity, really putting our money where our mouth is. And that's probably one of the most important pieces uh, to this puzzle in order for us to create the change that we want to see in Milwaukee County. It helps us to reimagine how Milwaukee County invests its resources to really address the generations of discriminatory policies and practices like redlining, like exclusionary zoning, and discriminatory lending that helped create the segregation in Milwaukee County that we see today but it has also contributed to some of the largest racial disparities in income and health and other socioeconomic measures throughout our nation. Now on this slide, you will see that we, we, we have been intentional including folks that we haven't seen on particular boards. And we've appointed 79 women and 71 people of color to different boards and commissions. Well, we also created the Office of Equity to better align departmental scope as well as to provide a focus on that strategic plan. And this transition really provides a broader lens to ensure that we're really meeting the needs of residents, particularly who have been historically underserved, because we want to make sure that no one is left behind anymore. But it also allows us to build the capacity, the capacity of our employees, the capacity of our county leaders, our departments, as well as our stakeholders and partners to transform the policies and procedures and power structures to make sure that everyone throughout Milwaukee County can benefit from our services and the partnerships that we're creating. And throughout the pandemic, I think everybody understands that it's, we've had a, a, an employment issue. It's hard finding workers out there. So we've launched the Changemakers marketing effort. We've also invested in a, a human resource staff to assist in not only hiring, but also to helping us to retain a, a, a diverse and talented workforce. We've also been bridging the gap because we believe in implementing the no one door model of customer service. And what this does is that it helps to create an easier access to quality care. Because anyone, regardless of your age, regardless of your ability status, you should and you can be served no matter how you enter the system within Milwaukee County. We've integrated veteran services as well as the Department on Aging into the Department of Health and Human Services to elevate the unique needs of both communities. It helps to enhance our service delivery model so services and processes are centered around the convenience and the needs of those individuals. And with the departments coming together, we can now expand as well as invest in critical services. We can share some resources as well as the knowledge and do some cross-training. And when it comes down to the COVID-19 uh, dollars that we receive, we maximize our federal dollars to distribute the COVID-19 uh, vaccine to historically underserved neighborhoods through a zip code program. And, and we established a public vaccination site around the south side of the city of Milwaukee at Kosciuszko Community Center. And when it comes down to investing in equity, we created the Division of Grants and Special Projects. Now we did this because we wanted to make sure that we could identify and secure every single federal and state dollar that were out there. Because this is your money. This is our money. And by securing those grants, we'll be finding dollars that we need to fund the ideas and improve the access and deliver in increasing that quality of care for all of our residents. And in the first year, that department secured over $46 million of your money. Now, in the first, and we also have been working on housing. And the Housing First approach has helped Milwaukee County achieve the lowest unsheltered homeless population per capita in the nation for two years in a row. We've also completed all three phases of MCTS Next to improve the rider experience. We've launched the East-West Bus Rapid Transit a nine-mile regional modern transit service connecting destinations from downtown Milwaukee all the way up to the Milwaukee Regional Medical Center. And we put ARPA funding to work to address the acute community needs by allocating over $6 million to fund both youth mentoring as well as other programs that we know that will help improve public safety. We've increased employee compensation to meet the needs of the changing job market and instituted a paid parental leave program. And with affordable housing developments happening in, 
in, in South Milwaukee, Oak Creek, and in, in West Dallas, we're experiencing the largest push for suburban affordable housing in over 20 years. And in the last budget, we invested over $20 million into our CARS program, which is our Community Access to Recovery program, our primary wraparound mental health and substance abuse program. And we've also won a settlement over $100 million to help combat the opioid epidemic. We've already allocated $11 million to critically harm reduction and prevention services. Now, we still have some places to go. And when it comes down to housing, we've done a great deal to work with people and to keep people within their homes and really prevent evictions. And we want to continue to move forward to do our part and create more home ownership opportunities for residents in all parts of Milwaukee County. And in the coming year, we anticipate seeing families start to move into these housing developments that we've invested in. The behavior and health redesign is a very important piece in tackling, particularly when you think about the issues that we've been seeing. And so we want to be able to invest, particularly moving those resources closer to individuals who need it the most. And over the past year, we've aimed to launch the the Assistant Outpatient Treatment Program to provide more effective, targeted, and comprehensive evidence-based practices for individuals who have previously been resisted to treatment themselves. And so I also anticipate that we're going to do everything that we can to find more smart ways to invest opioid settlement dollars because we have to make sure that we continue to invest in saving lives and make sure that we're aiding all of our residents on their road to recovery. And we will continue to find ways to move all of these resources upstream to address these issues before they impact not just our community, but individual residents at the same time. Our transportation system is a vital resource so, for, for so many people in our community. And we know that high quality public transit, our high quality public transportation system will make our area even more attractive for both residents as well as businesses. But it's also key to making sure that we're dismantling the historical segregation throughout the Walker County. Because people should be able to go and live wherever they want, recreate wherever they want, work wherever they want. But we need to have a solid transportation system for that. The North-South Transit Enhancement Study. This is a precursor to the North-South Bus Rapid Transit Line. And it's underway currently and it's entered the design phase of this particular line. And the Transportation Alternatives Project, made possible by a federal grant, we're going to be seeking from all 19 municipalities across Milwaukee County to not only just take an inventory, but to assist on the reckless driving issues that we see. But also because of the federal government, we received the Safe Streets for All grant. And this helped Milwaukee County create its first ever comprehensive plan to reduce the number of roadway fatalities across all 19 municipalities. Now, Dan from our budget office is going to get into the details about our budget forecast. But as many of you know, Milwaukee County recently secured a long-term solution to its fiscal issues in the form of an increased sales tax. Now, while the additional revenues does provide us the flexibility needed to avoid draconian cuts across the entire board of Milwaukee County, we are still tasked with being good stewards of public funds and avoiding the financial peril for future leaders. Even with this in mind, the road ahead is paved with great opportunity for us to continue making an impact in the lives of all of our residents and taking the steps that we need to take towards both race and health equity. Now, I know a lot of us would like to use this opportunity to use the 2024 budget to do more for the community, to do more for our employees, to do more for our residents, to do more for the future of Milwaukee County. But it's important that we all keep that future in mind and make sure that future leaders aren't saddled with the same financial problems that we've just solved. Now, when I became county executive, one of my commitments was transparency. And to that end, we've launched a dashboard where anyone can track how we're doing to advance our strategic plan. Because we have to do it in collaboration. Because we're so focused on partnerships at Milwaukee County, we are partnering with other local of local units of government, with other foundations, with businesses and nonprofits, to post data about how we are doing to advance health and racial equity all across all of our services. And one example that I'm especially proud of is our workforce dashboard, where you can drill down on any of our teams across county government to see how we're doing to advance our strategic objective of, of ensuring that our employees reflect the full diversity of the county at every level of government. If you would like to learn more, 
You can go online and you can visit county.milwaukee.gov slash vision. Again, county.milwaukee.gov slash vision. Or you can simply Google Milwaukee County Strategy Group. And finally, after all you've heard today, I'm sure that you all have your own ideas on how to prioritize the investments in the upcoming budget. But in addition to making your voice heard today, you can also share your, your priorities utilizing our Balancing Act online tool. And you can find this on the same website, county.milwaukee.gov, except slash balancing-act. And this gives you the opportunity to be county executive for a day. It gives you the opportunity for you to submit your budget recommendations for the 2024 budget. And we want to hear directly from you so we, make, we can make sure that the budget is literally putting local priorities first and that it's continuing to help us move towards our goals of achieving both race and both equity. And this tool will be available until October 6th, so please share it with your, with your networks, let so everybody know, tweet it out, Facebook it out, text it out, let people utilize this tool and under, have, a better, have a better understanding of what it takes to really craft a budget for more accounting. So with that, I want to say thank you again for joining us, and I would like to turn it over to Dan Laurel from the Strategy, Budget, and Performance Office.
very happy to be part of it and see that there's a lot of positives there in terms of how well it's run. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about the uh, impact on the county's structural deficit. Um, so this chart shows us where we were prior to Act 12 and where we are after the Act 12 changes. When we see positive numbers here for a year, this means that the county has money to invest. And when there's negative dollars listed, that means that the county has to make cuts in order to meet the requirement for a balanced budget. So after the Act 12 changes, we can see the county has no structural deficit for 2024 or 25. In fact, a pretty sizable surplus for 24. Uh, however, once we go into, up to 2028, we can see a rather large deficit coming back. Uh, it's significantly smaller than it would have been without Act 12, but it's uh, still out there, largely due to the fact that the county's expenses are growing at a faster rate than the county's revenues. Um, so one of our goals with this year's budget is to make strategic decisions so we can avoid long-term fiscal issues and help make some of these negative numbers a little bit smaller over the positive so we can have additional investments. <coughs> Some priorities to look at for 2024, uh, the transit system. Um, there's some state and federal funding for the transit system. Um, some of that's going to be ongoing. Some of that will be going away in future years. Um, we're going to make considerations for how we're going to fund transit going forward. Uh, parks maintenance and operations. Uh, this is an area, as I mentioned previously, that's non-mandated. So we've had tough budgets in previous years. It's been difficult to allocate as much funding to parks as would have liked, so there's some uh, ongoing needs. Uh, in terms of courts, there's a backlog currently with court cases. Um, and there's some staffing issues in courts that we're looking to see if additional funding can be provided to help with that. Um, similarly, public safety, uh, especially in the corrections field, has had some issues with staffing. Um, we're looking to see if some additional funding can help mitigate those issues. It also has some health and human services programs and also funding for the workforce. Uh, a, a big number that I'd like to note too is we have about a $1 billion infrastructure backlog. Uh, so this is things across the board from uh, parks facilities to roads to buildings to bridges. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's been a lot of tough budgets for the county in the past decade or two, and there's been a lot of needs that we would have liked to fund that we haven't been able to. Um, so we're looking at this as an opportunity to see if we can fund some of those now. Oh, and additionally, um, given the additional funding source, we're also exploring opportunities for property tax relief to see if that's going to be available. All right, onto the annual budget process calendar. Uh, so right now we're between July 15 and October 1. This is the recommended budget phase. Um, departments have already submitted their requests uh, into the county administration. Um, so by October 1st, the county executive will release his recommended budget. Uh, and then uh, in October, November, the county board will hear the budget, make their amendments. Uh, and in the middle of November, we'll have a final adopted budget that's ready for departments to uh, implement the services. Thank you. I'll pass it back to Shane. Right, thank you, County Executive and Dan. Um, so, we're at the portion of the program where we will have public comment. Again, I do want to restate the ground rules for participating this evening. Each person will have two minutes to make a comment and or ask a question. You will receive a reminder 30 seconds remaining and Milwaukee County staff reserves the right to silence participants who do not adhere to our ground rules. So the first name I have here um, is Michelle Townsend. Michelle, if you could come to the mic here and state what your question is. And then if I can get Robert Waddell behind her. And then John Strobuke next, and Kurt Ping. Hi, my name is Michelle Townsend. Um, I work for Milwaukee Job Corps, so I am thrilled to be here. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask, because I work with youth between the ages of 16 and 24, it's about the uh, crime that is being committed uh, with our youth, with driving, and um, just all sorts of things. Are there any things in the budget that we have as far as programs, uh, re, uh, readmission after uh, 
being incarcerated or just something that the youth can do dealing with schools? Is there anything in the budget that works for them? Because right now it seems to be a lot of crime and a lot of death. Uh, since I've been uh, in this program, I have lost over seven uh, youth that were in the program when COVID hit. So I got a lot of concern uh, and I'm hoping that there is something in the budget that is uh, designed to help our youth in Milwaukee County. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, so I know that we have the Department of Health and Human Services here. We also have the Department of Youth and Family Services that we also invest in. Uh, but one of, the, one of the programs that we would like to expand with these particular budgets, particularly our incredible messages program. And so this is big boss justice involved youth and young people. And uh, I believe we have about 100, 100 young people go through this program. 77 percent of them, 77 of them, uh, <laughs> uh, have not been So we want to be able to invest in those types of programs. And I know that we have partners that we work with, like the Milwaukee uh, Christian Center, as well as one of those four four like one of the other organizations as well. But I highly recommend that we reach out to the Department of Health and Human Services to make more Thank you. Good evening, my name is Bob Waddell. My question uh, was in reference to renovation of the Whitman Park Golf Course. I did that, have that question. Uh, uh, I gave that question to the executive director today, tonight at the Front Public Works, and he answered my question. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. to fly. 
on the uh, renovation or repair of the Milwaukee Brewer Stadium. And I would like to ask, is that actually a possibility? Because that's not something that I would like to see. Personally, I would not like to see our, um, our sales tax that we're paying as the people of Milwaukee to be used to be fixing something that is owned by, fixing something that, um, you know, the stadium that the Brewers play in, that they should be able to, we, we shouldn't have to be filling the bill for this, right? Um, this is something that um, they should be, the Brewers should be handling, and even if I feel like um, we're going to be using any, any, any sort of taxation to do this, that sort of responsibility, I think, should be shared among multiple municipalities around the stadium, not just Milwaukee, but also surrounding Milwaukee counties and other cities in the region. But in summary, I'm just here to say, um, I don't want to see our sales tax be used for the Brewer Stadium, and hoping that's not the case. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, so, sales tax cannot be used to go towards the Brewer Stadium. Uh, based off of the current law, it can only go to all right, Jody Bloss, if you would like to come up to the mic. And anyone else who has not signed up but would like an opportunity to speak, please just line up at this time. Thank you. Hi, thank you. My name is Jody Block. I'm with Children's Wisconsin. And our vision for the kids in the state of Wisconsin in Milwaukee County is that they be the healthiest in the nation. So we really need partners like Milwaukee County to help in that effort. So I'm just going to comment on three quick things where we'd like to see continued investments, uh, investments that have already happened continue as well as maybe some additional investments in these three particular areas. The first is housing. I think Milwaukee County has done a great job in terms of housing and working on the homelessness issue. This impacts a lot of kids who come into our emergency department, who visit our primary care and urgent clinics for health care. We know that housing and stable housing continues to be an issue for families in Milwaukee County. So continued investments in not only the Navigator program, but perhaps some flexible funding options in the housing space to help families who are struggling with rent assistance or purchasing things like an air conditioner for kids who have asthma. Having flexibility in some of that funding for low-income families would be really helpful. So, so some additional investments in there would be great, as well as continuing with the um, partnership with Habitat for Humanity and Axe Housing. Those have been great partners in the community, and we'd like to see that continue. We also like to see continued investments, as some of the speakers before have said, in mental and behavioral health, specifically access for youth, um, as well um, in the mobile response is critically important. We appreciate the partnership with the uh, Mental Health Emergency Center. That's been great. Um, and lastly, some additional funding to prevent gun violence in the city. We know that that's a, that continues to be a big issue in, for our youth. We treat a lot of those victims in our emergency department. We see the impacts of that every day. So thank you. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Chris White, and I'm a Vietnam veteran. I live in the city of Milwaukee with my wife of 50 years, and we voted for Mr. Crowley both times. I'd like Mr. Crowley, along with the, first, with the uh, rest of the Milwaukee County Supervisors, to picture this. You're walking along the lakefront, you're passing Veterans Park, and you look down at your grandchild and point and say, there was a magnificent Majestic, iconic, living, breathing story situated right here. It was a sight to see. It was a story about all the Milwaukeeans and Wisconsinites going all the way back to the Civil War who fought bravely and gave their lives for this country, our country, with courage and valor. And your grandchild looks up to you and asks, what happened to that building? And you answer, I didn't have the courage then to stand up at a budget meeting because it was no longer the flavor of the day to admit one's patriotism and love for this country. So I went along with the other supervisors 
and I voted to defund the Milwaukee County War Memorial Center and its ultimate demise. And now I look back, I'm ashamed for taking the side of the contrarians instead of the silent majority. In closing, I'd like to say to everyone here that it is the apathy of decent people that is the fuel that feeds authoritarian flames. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Oh, my name is Max Wozinski. I'm a Milwaukee resident. I'm a veteran also. My wife and I have 52 years lived in Milwaukee. And I was shocked uh, that the new tax they were crammed down our throat. They used extortion sticks to stick this to us. They threatened the safety of the citizens by cutting back the police department and cutting back the fire department. The mayors and the county executives, oh, the number one priority should be the safety of the citizens, not uh, uh, threatening Milwaukee's a high, got a reputation of high crime. And now they're going to stick it to it with a high, a high taxes also. High tax, high, and it, it was, it's wrong. The, why was on a referendum? The first time for the mayor, it was, a, it was half a percent, half, one half a percent on a referendum. It got turned down. So this time they doubled it to two percent, to plus the, the county joined the thing. It, it's wrong, it's wrong. And then I read in the paper about this gentleman before me, uh, he spoke about the uh, stadium. Well, the county board decided the stadium unanimously turned down that no money was going to be put toward that stadium. Now, right after this, this tax got crammed down our throat, all of a sudden they said it might be considered. They made it worded like that. One penny, count, the, the county money, not one cent should go towards it. No matter if from this hand or this hand, it's still, it's still for us. And then, not a museum. Uh, not Rock Museum, the streets of old Milwaukee. It's, it's a tourist attraction, that's fabulous. And, uh, and the domes, and this new museum they're going to build, the picture of it looks like it's top heavy. It looks like it's getting ready to fall over. Renovate the old one. Keep the streets of old Milwaukee. It's nostalgia. Well, thank you. Because if you're asking me where the money going, it's going to the state. <laughs> well, well, the thirty dollar. So, the, well, the, you're talking about the thirty dollars. So, the thirty dollar bill tax that we that we create doesn't just, just goes to the transit system. It goes to our entire Milwaukee County Department of Transportation. And so, we also rely on the state to bring us different types of dollars to be able to invest in transit and invest in our roads. 
and we do not receive the same level of funding when it comes down to transit, as well as our roads that we used to get received from the state. Uh, a great example of that is two years ago, uh, the state actually cut from uh, particularly Milwaukee County and from Madison $42 million for our transit service. Um, so we have to figure out how to employ those types of budget gaps. Uh, but, at the, but when it comes down to the dollars that we receive, you can look at our budget and see exactly how we're spending these dollars. We're not receiving the same level of funding that we have once received, not just from the state, but as well from the federal government. Thank you. 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 Thank you
city of Orange. But when it comes down to what investments we're going to make in the future, um, that's going to, that has to be determined based off our budget. And so working with Marquee County, what we do in future budgets will determine what we'll be able to, what we do in the next couple of budgets will determine the types of investments we can make into the future. So it's hard to really answer that question knowing that we, we still only have access to those. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Jason Waters, track Greendale, Wisconsin. A um, couple questions. So, one, I just hope when you're looking at things through the racial equity lens, you don't forget that it's really a diversity of opinions, ideas that will move the county forward as well. That it just can't be a reflection of the color of the county. It needs to be a reflection of diversity of ideas that will move us forward as well. Yep. So, second thing as far as accountability and transparency. So, I'll say I've emailed you or your office, and instead of getting an answer to my question, I got about five paragraphs about racial equity and <laughs> no answer to my question. So, it would be nice in correspondences like that, you know, if there's a staffer filling that out, that they actually answer the question. <laughs> I needed like a one sentence response back, and I didn't get that. Um, the other thing, I was actually pseudo opposed to the sales tax increase because of the accountability or lack thereof I thought there was with funds. Um, I really don't see how you could actually even spend that surplus that you have out there. You know, with having a billion dollars in deferred maintenance, which having, I think there's probably about $60 million in backdrop payments that still need to be paid for, you know, prior pension obligations. I don't know how you can even think about investing that into anything. If you are going to invest it, I would suggest that you don't put it in anything that's going to be a long-term, dedicated funding source. You know, you have the problems with the county transit system that's going to be $40 million in 
deficit in less than two years. So I don't really see an avenue for that. Uh, the other question, this is just directly from the county executive. Um, you were talking about, I think a couple weeks ago in the news you had, you wanted to talk to the state legislature about changing something so you could use some of this money to pay down other bonds, other pension obligations in order to free up more funds to put towards other services. What exactly were you talking about? That was in the news a couple weeks ago. And then Dan, if you can answer the gal's question on the wheel tax, because that came up during our conversation we had about the budget proposal. I think it's pretty much almost 95% of that goes to the county transit system and not much goes to the roads. So if you could answer what percentage that is. I thought it was like $16 million and $15 million, I think, goes to MCTS and not into the roads. So this, this question, are you, can you repeat this question? I had actually. One was, we were talking about, I think a couple weeks ago, we were going to talk to the state legislature about modifying the terms of being able to use those additional state funds for paying down the pension obligations. And it was one of these things that was about other obligations for the pension. I was just wondering what those were. But if you wanted to take some money from, you know, you have to say, So what the sales tax does is it goes directly into the pension fund. So it doesn't just pay for the pension fund, it also pays for the pension obligation loans, which is the $200 million that has been levied on everybody's property taxes uh, since 2009. <clears throat> so what we're trying to, what we're trying to do with the, with the thing related to being able to free up more money is that we're looking for policy ideas to be able to do that. And so, uh, so that, that's, that's basically it. We, we're looking at different policy ideas to be able to use that sales tax dollars to pay towards different things. An example of that would be we have WRS costs. So right now, uh, City of Milwaukee, Milwaukee County, and all municipalities across the state has to utilize those property taxes, tax things in the WRS. Now, if, if there's an opportunity for us to be able to free up more dollars to put towards local priorities, I would like to see if we could use some of that sales tax dollars to pay for the cost for them. Yeah, so related to where the vehicle registration fee funding goes, uh, yes, I believe you are correct. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but estimated maybe 85% goes towards transit in the last 15 towards the highway system. High level numbers, don't quote me on that exactly, but that's roughly where it is. I just have a quick question on the, uh, it looks like the budget's kind of plummeting over the next several years, even with the uh, surplus we have. Next two. Is that mostly just because of the increasing pension aspect? I think the two biggest factors that cause the gap to increase significantly in the next couple of years is um, one is that um, our overall structural deficit, where every single year our expenditures increase by about two and a half percent and our revenues increase by one percent. So that's um, so it's, it's just overall. Yeah, that's just overall like the cost of contracting and employees goes up higher than our revenue. Uh, and then also there is a rather large jump in 2025 since that's uh, where our transit gap comes in. Um, there's some pretty significant federal funding towards transit that's projected to expire in 2025, so that's why you'll see a big jump in that area. And then one other uh, thing I had to said with, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, major projects coming up with like, safe streets in terms of, you know, blocking the Milwaukee side and reckless driving and all that stuff. I was wondering how much is being looked at like very cheap, temporary places to put out I know there's some like, focus on the very dangerous intersections um, that have a lot of frequent um, instances uh, uh, of collisions, but I know there's a lot of places where I am almost hit on my bike or in my car uh, where there might not be an incident, but there's a lot of people running reds, uh, slipping through the intersections. I don't know if there's looking at, at really cheap you know, blockers or haulers or something, just putting something like that in there. So when it, come, when it comes down to road designs, we can only make those investments now, we are looking to work with all 19 municipalities and figure out a strategy about what types of investments other local communities may need to invest. But it's going to take all of us and getting those local communities to make those investments. So we can only pretty much, we can only really invest in that type of infrastructure if we actually follow that. Thanks. Right. Is there anyone else who would like to have a comment or a question? at this time. Okay. I thank you all for coming out to our 2024 Budget Town Hall. 
We appreciate all of the feedback that you provided us, and it will be looked at and taken into consideration. I wish you all uh, safe travels on your road home. Hopefully the rain has subsided. And again, I thank you all for coming out tonight. <laughs> All right, let's get that.